Hello everyone, this is Decrypt and today I'm going to show you how to exploit a buffer overflow vulnerability on a Windows binary. This is part 2 of the buffer overflow for OSCP video series. So let's get started. In this video particularly, I'm going to show you how to fuzz a service and how to find the, the total number of bytes required to, to control the return address or the EIP value. So let's start the, the application that we want to exploit. So I'm going to use immunity debugger to debug the application and I'm going to uh, be working on the brainpan.exe. Load it in the debugger and press play unless you see the message running on the bottom of the screen. So this is now running and we we can see that it's binding to port 9999. Let's see if we can access the application from our attacker machine. So we can access and we have a message called BrainPan and prompts to enter the password. So it's pretty obvious that we are going to um, overflow the, the password field here. So let's try to create a script uh, that will first uh, or that will first first the, the password field and give you a rough idea of how many bytes you need to be sending to in order to for you to crash the service. So I'm going to use the scripts that I already written, but make some changes for this binary here. So real quick to take a peek into what's in this video series. So we will have the first pattern, control EIP, finding bad characters, finding the jump address, and finally executing a show. So that's the simple six steps we're going to be looking at in this video series. So let's open up the first script. So we got to make sure that we modify the script according to the interaction for this particular application here. So if you remember, when we connect to the service, we are directly presented with a message. So that shows that we will have to first receive the message that's being sent back by the server. So I change the port number here, which is 9999, and we gotta include The receive and since it's already here I'm not going to do anything about it so and we're going to close the connection there so if you take a look at the script what it does is first initializes a buffer a variable which is nothing but a list in Python and it is going to have a while loop run on this uh, run on the alphabet a and each time it's going to multiply it with the counter and add it to the list. So we will have a list of strings of various sizes, uh, of various, various lengths. So let's try and execute this. Save the file. So as we can see, it's stopping at 900 bytes. So which means that the application stopped responding after that. So let's go back to our Windows machine and we can see that it has crashed and we have an access violation at 414141. So we have the EIP over at, overwritten by the, the ASP send. We also have the EPP overwritten, which usually lies below the EIP. So that's, that's not surprising. And we also have the ESP or the stack uh, filled with A's. So that's cool. Let's stop this and rerun the application. Make sure you play it and get back to our machine. So since we know that we need to be sending the 900 bytes, the next step is to send a pattern of strings. So what we're going to do here is generate a pattern using the 
Metasploit script called pattern creator Ruby. So I'm going to switch to root real quick and locate pattern create and we are looking for this Ruby script. So we're going to execute the script and we supply the length and we're going to live uh, maybe since it's crashed at 900 let's give it a thousand and we have the unique pattern of strings which is of thousand characters long uh, so let's copy that to the clipboard and go back to our pattern.script so usually what we will do is copy the previous script and rename it so that's way you are able to sequentially make changes to the script uh, I've since I have already written my scripts here I'm going to just modify that one so as you can see, I have the comment for creating this, the unique strings. I'm going to quickly delete this one. So control K to delete line in nano and put that with quotes and make sure you have pasted it. Next thing is we're going to connect to port 9999. So make that change here. And that's it. So if you notice, I have put this in a try and exit block to make sure I understand if there is a connectivity issue uh, from my machine. So that's it. Let's save it and run the script. So just before that, we'll make sure it's running. Uh, yeah, so it's running. Let's run the script again. And it has successfully sent thousand bytes so let's go back and take a look and we have an access violation on the debugger so we have the EIP uh, pointing to this address here which is 35 72 41 34 so let's take a note it's 35 72 41 34 72 41 34 so let's copy this and find out where in this string uh, th that we sent uh, those bytes lie. So we're going to use a script called pattern query, which is also a Metasploit script. Uh, I'm sorry, which we're going to use pattern offset. It's going to calculate the offset of the given bytes on this uh, unique length length of strings that you sent. So since I have that that other terminal tab, so I'm going to copy this and overwrite my clipboard with this, and we're going to query for this address right here. So we have an exact offset at 524. So let's copy that. And go back to our third script, which is control EIP. And write 524 A's, 4 B's, and remaining C's. So I'm going to show that in my next video. Uh, so that's all for this video. In this video, we saw how to fuzz a service and to find the, the characters required to crash it, as well as find the offset of the EIP address. Uh, please continue to watch my next video to find how, how to control the EIP address. With that said, I want to sign off. Until then, decrypt.